Okay, question number six from January 2019, S1, the final question of this paper. Following some school examinations, Chetna is studying the results of the 16 students in her class. The mark for paper one, X, and the mark for paper two, Y, for each student are summarized in the following statistics. X bar means the average for the paper X was 35.75, and Y bar, the average for the paper two, was 25.75. Um, the standard deviation of x, sigma x, was 7.79 and the standard deviation of y is 11.91 and the sum of x times y is 15,837. Comment on the differences between the marks of the students on paper 1 and paper 2. So for this question we just need some basic, uh, it's only two marks, so you've got to mention something I guess about the, uh, the mean, so you can say that the, the mean for paper one is greater than the mean for paper two. And you can also mention something about, let's move this down a bit. Uh, you can also mention something about the uh, standard deviation. Okay, the standard deviation for paper one is less than the standard deviation for paper two. So we can say something about this, that this means that the uh, the marks, try to put it in context of the question, of the students in paper one are less spread out than paper two okay and that's pretty self-explanatory the mean for paper one on average they did better in paper one than paper two and for the standard deviation for paper one is less than paper two that means the marks for of the students in paper one are less spread out than in paper two because the standard deviation is less standard deviation is a measure of the spread okay and the mean is like the average okay now chetna decides to examine these data in more detail and plots the marks for each of the 16 students on a scattered, scattered diagram which is shown opposite. Well, I've just copied it and put it below so we can see what's happening. So explain the circle point 38. Explain why the circle point 380 is a possible outlier. Well, that's because it's, you can say it's um, far away from the data or you could say Okay, it doesn't lie within, it doesn't, does not lie close to the line of best fit, you could say. The line of best fit would be over here somewhere. And it doesn't lie close to the line of best fit. That might be one answer you could say. You could say something like, you know, it's far, it's, it's far away from the rest of the body of the data, something like that. Suggest a possible reason for the result. Well, if, he, if she got 38 in paper one, this is paper one and this is paper two. She got paper 38 in paper one and zero in paper two. Possibly you could say that, um, okay, she, she may have been, okay, the student, we don't know if it's a she or he. Okay, the student may have been absent. The student may have been absent absent for paper two okay something like that okay then it says chetna decides to omit the data data point 380 and examine the other 15 students marks find the value of x bar and the value of y bar for these 15 students okay so let's just take this information from up here Okay, that's for 16 students. Okay, let's just take this. Oops, what am I doing? Take this over here. All right, so that's X bar for the 16 students. This is for 16 students. Okay, this is for the 16 of them. Okay, so for 15 students, what we need to do is 
we need to find the total sum of these and take away the 38 for the x. This is remember, this is the x value, this is the y value. So you're going to have 16 times 35.75 divided by, uh, then you've got to take away the new value, which is 38, because we want to emit it, so that 38 is going to be taken out of it, and then divide it by the, the number of students, which is now 15. We've taken away one of the entries. Okay, and that will now give us our new mean, omitting that particular value. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. We got 16 times 35.75 minus 38 divided this time by 15. That gives us 178 over 5, which is 35.6. 35 point, oops, 35.6 is a new mean. Okay. 35.6. So the new X bar is 35.6. Okay. And we got for, this is for X. And we're going to have the new Y bar. Well, this, you got 16 times 25.75. Okay, but instead of dividing by 16, we're going to divide it by 15. We don't have to take anything away from it because it's taking away the zero. It was like one of the marks was zero, but there was 15, 16 entries. Now that there's 16 and there's 15 entries. Okay, so the sum will be the same as it was before, but you're just dividing by 15 instead of 16 now. So it's just going to be um, 16 times 25. 0.75 divided by 15. So it's going to be 24 point, 412 over 15. Leave it like this first. 412 over 15, which gives you 27.466. 27.466. Continue on. So it's 27. So the y bar 1 is 27.5. Okay, so that's the answer for part C of this question. Okay, now for part D. So explain why the sum of XY is still 15,837. Now remember the point was 38, 0. Okay, so the sum of XY, okay, means the X values... Okay, multiplied by the y values. Okay, and summed. Okay, added together. So for the point 38, 0, x times y is equal to 38 times 0, which is 0. Therefore, the sum of xy is unchanged because you're adding 0 to it. Okay, so whether you include it or don't include it, it's still going to be the same because it was zero anyway. So x y. Okay, then it says show that s x y equals one one six nine eight. Okay, make a bit of space here. So this is D part one. Oops, this is D part one, and now we're doing D part two. Okay. So what we need to do is go to the formula sheet, which is over here. Okay, so if we go to the formula sheet and we go to what we need, uh, we need this stuff here. Okay. Showing, ah, we need the sum of xy. Okay, so we need the sum of xy, which is this. Okay, so we want to do this for the 15 students. Okay, so our n is 15 here. So what we need, oops, what we need is this part of it here. Sorry about that, this thing is lagging on me. Okay, so we need this from the formula sheet. We need, we're interested in this part here. So the sum of um, the, how x, not sum of x, y, how x and y vary with each other is the sum of x times the sum of y minus the sum of x 
times the sum of y over n. Okay, so we need to find out what all these things are. Okay, that's s x y. Okay, so we need to have the sum of x times y, which is this. Okay, we've got that already. All right, minus the sum of x times the sum of y, which we already found. Okay, so this part is already here. So we can say this is equal to uh, 15,837 minus, and now we're going to have the sum of x times the sum of y. So if we go back to the previous part of the question, okay, um, the sum of x would have been this times 15, and the sum of y is this times 15. Okay, so 35.6 times 15, 35.6 times 15, 35.6 times 15, okay, gives you 534. So that's 534, the sum of x. Okay, so you have 534 times, and the sum of y, if we go back, the sum of y is going to be uh, 412 over 15 times 15, which is 412. Okay, so times 412, that's the sum of x, and that's all over 15, because n is 15, there's 15 entries. So that should give us sxy. Okay, so if we calculate that, you got 15 eight three seven okay minus and you're going to have 534 times 412 divided by 15 and that gives you 116.98 116 sorry 116.98 and that's exactly what we had to show 116.98 Okay, so we're on the right tracks there. Okay, then it says, for these 15 students, Chetna calculates that SXX, which is how X varies with itself, is 965.6, and SYY, how Y varies with itself, is 156.1, correct to one decimal place. Calculate the product moment correlation coefficient for these 15 students. Now, PMCC is given the symbol R. Okay, it's given the symbol R. So we have to find, we have to use this formula here, basically. All of this topic is all in the formula book, basically. Okay, so we have to use, whoops, let's get this. Okay, so we have to use this formula, which we've got all the information we need. Okay, so R, which is the PMCC, is equal to what we found earlier. So it's starting to lag now. Okay, so that's equal to SXY, which we found here, and they told us what it was, even if we couldn't get it, it's given 1169.8 over, and we're going to have the square root of how S very, X varies with itself, which is given as 965.6, and how Y varies with itself, which is 1. 561.7 and we just have to plug that in our calculator basically so we got this value divided by the square root of 965.6 times 1561.7 that gives us 0 0.9526 Zero point nine five two six. So we can say R is equal to let's write it to three SF zero point nine five three zero point nine five three. Okay, that's the value of R. We could give it to one decimal place as these were given to one decimal place. 
I guess you could write it at 0 0.95 well it would be almost one basically but very close to one but that's fine calculate the equation of the regression line of y and x for these 15 students giving your answer in the form y equals a a plus bx so of y on x okay of y on x okay so now what we'll do here i'll do this in the next video